Well, when I went on exchange to Kingston, Jamaica, the University of the West Indies, I was met with some hostility from other, from Jamaicans. Um, and they said, um, you're black, just like I'm black. You're black, I'm black. And I said, yeah, 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 what, well, what's the problem? You know, and they said, <laughs> Yeah, I'm using it as a synonym, girl, you know, like, yeah, okay, we're here. You know, we, we were, uh, our ancestors were, you know, might be, have been brought from the same uh, port in Igbo land, and they were just dropped off at different ports, you know, yours in uh, Jamaica and mine probably in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, they were like, no, 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 no. I don't know who you think you are, but you know, you guys were calling yourself black, but now you're calling yourself African American to separate yourselves from us. Um, you are you use African American to emphasize your Americanness and thus your you know superiority, right? And so they're they're I guess drawing on this idea of like you're saying American superiority, American exceptionalism, and uh, that I had. I didn't think about that. It did not cross my mind. And so even though I had read um, that race is a social construct and um, ethnicity is, uh, it changes race and ethnicity, perceptions of race and eth ethnicity change in different places, right? They're different in diff at different points in space and different points in time. So that story has both, right? Even I, in my lifetime, changed my racial slash ethnic designation, self-definition. And then when I moved, you know, when I went to another space, um, of my race was perceived differently and I had to self-identify in a sort of different way to connect with people um, there who might have had some of the same ancestors that I have because my dad, his biological father, he says, is Jamaican, but he never knew him really. So I don't know what, the, I don't know if he really is. I don't know who he is, right? And my dad will say, well, his last name was Martin. And I'm like, oh, that's helpful, dad. You know, like, I, I don't know, you know? So we might have a lot more in common than we think we do. I know that, and I came in to grips with this idea that it's, for me, um, growing up, it particularly being put in these, you know, on the front lines of, the desegregation, and I should say I'm not front lines, of, you know, second generation of the, the, the desegregation effort, a lot of times I would be the only person who looked like me in the room. And so I got in the, a subconscious habit of looking around to see if I could find somebody else to look like me. And so if you if you take that kind of basic um, behavior, I would say, oh, baby, you know what? Hey, how you doing, brother? <laughs> you look like me, I look like you. And I know that um, self-definition is a lot broader than that, a lot more complex and uh, changes a lot more um, often <laughs> than that over space and time. So um, like I said, I'm just trying to, to have a, um, to put a broad definition out there to connect with folks. Mm -hmm. All right. But sincerely speaking, deep inside of you, Mm -hmm. Do you believe, do you know that you are actually from Africa or is it because you just want to connect? Well, I'm not, but I'm positive that my ancestors are very positive. Okay. No, All right. Yeah. Doesn't now, my, doesn't my hair look like it? <laughs> doesn't my skin tone look like it? Um, my body shape looks like it. People will say, well, you bear the mark of mother, mother Africa. Um, I looked more. Um, I think um, uh, 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 like a person of African descent, there's some little practices, right? I mean, back in the 80s, we would straighten our hair and, you know, do things to look more like, quote unquote, normal Americans, which means less African. But I got very, very um, pointed about not doing that kind of thing and, and definitely not being ashamed of my heritage. And then there are little things that are, they're snatches of uh, culture here and there, right? That initially were defined as different. But as I grew more knowledgeable, I realized those were little things that my folks held on to um, in a world that was, was designed to drill their African culture out of them and force them to assimilate to the dominant European and European descended people's culture, um, cultures. 
they're there, right? So I will always tell my students, um, <laughs> you know, I went to this integrated school starting in the second grade because kindergarten and first grade, I lived with my grandparents in Birmingham, Alabama in their home. There, I, thus I was zoned to the same segregated school my mom went to, which actually never desegregated because the community was major, remained majority black. And um, uh, so, you know, because people are zoned to schools based on where they live, the, the school never integrated. So um, my mom, because I remember one day the principal came out and he said, we get inferior things. Even our, he said, I learned our toilet paper is inferior to the toilet paper that they send to the white schools. And he held up this very, you know, more like, you know, post-it pad paper, toilet uh, paper sheet. And then it's more, you know, luxurious kind of toilet paper that they sent to the white schools, even within our same district, right? So then my mom was like, I have to, find a way to get you to the schools that are integrating um, so you can get a, a better quality education because that's where the resources are being sent. So I didn't go to an integrated school until I was in uh, second grade. And when I went there, um, one of the first things I learned was that my speech was non-standard because <laughs> I had been living with my grandparents. I would use words that older African-Americans in Alabama would use. So an example might be, um, and so my grandmother might say, stop digging in that hole down there. There might be a snake in there. And if I went to school and I said, well, stop digging in that hole, right? Meaning stop poking or stabbing in this hole. <laughs> non-African-American students will look at me and say, what language are you speaking, ma'am? <laughs> what, what did you just say? You know, and I said, oh, wait, this is not English. And I learned this is not standard English, right? So I learned to what we call code switch right? and speak in a, a standardized way. Um, uh, so uh, once I became a historian, I started to learn like some of these words in this African-American vernacular, right, dialect, are actually holdovers of a myriad of African words because my ancestors came from a myriad of ethnic groups, right? Spoke a myriad of languages. So it's not, there's no standardization. There are snatches you know, of words here and there. And so we learned about some dominant groups, right? So we learned about Yorubas or like I said, the Ashantis, right? Um, I had never heard of ethnic people until one day I had a family friend who was braiding my daughter's hair and she was talking on the phone, and, you know, and I suppose it was Nija <laughs> that she was speaking, but some of the words were in English and some of the words were in other languages and she would switch back and forth. And the way she said her sentence, she used chook in the same way that my grandma would use chook, jook in that sentence that I said, don't be jooking in that hole. And I said, oh, wow. I said, you use that word exactly the way my grandparents would use it. I said, what does that mean? She says, ethic, and it means to stab or poke. So, yeah, I know I'm, I'm of African descent, <laughs> Mr. Thank Obey. You. That is very important. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> that is very important. It yes. is absolutely important. Uh, you know, it is not a theory, it's the reality, no? There is mm -hmm. nothing we can, it, it, there is nothing to philosophize about that. All right, why I was also uh, trying to uh, stick on that for a while, that question is, like you also, I think you may, mentioned of it in your explanation that when you say black, it doesn't really explain who you are. It just point to a semblance of how you appear. But we're not looking for a semblance of how we appear. We are really human beings. So we must know who we are. We must use words that explain where we are coming from, our origin, our achievement, our language. All these things cannot be contained in just color. There is no way it can be contained in color. But when you say Africa, it contains it. It contains all of it. It contains the geography. It contains the history. It contains the people. So that is why I'm trying to see if we can 
just use Africa instead of black as a mm. historian. I don't know if I'm making sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you're making sense. And um, a lot of people who I respect and hold near and dear would say yes. Um, and a lot of my colleagues and friends actually only refer to the, themselves as African. In fact, um, at, I remember at a party when I was still a student, um, one particular person that I met taught us a song. And the song is just, you sing in rounds. You know what I mean by rounds? Like one group starts, then the next group starts before the first group finishes. We are an African people. Whoa. And then, you know, before we uh, finish, the next group starts. And they do that until people get tired because it was important for this group of people, my peers, to stand and say that, in particular when we came from families where maybe our grandparents and even some of our parents would say, we're not. Um, when other people in society might say, no, you're just an you know, bad word for black nigger, you know, or you know, you're Negro and it, it, in a way to say, and you're also subjugated to white supremacy. Um, but um, I think I prefer the term African-American. I personally do because it also tells what I feel like it's important to do is for me to, ex to explain that I was one of those people who wasn't born on the African continent, but Africa was born in me because of my heritage and the snatches of culture that my ancestors managed to hold on to despite these overwhelming efforts to indoctrinate and assimilate them to white supremacy, to European supremacy. Um, and I am not trying to appropriate or pretend that I'm anything other. I'm very proud because my African-American heritage, the, the, the lineage of people who were enslaved and chattel bondage in my family um, display uh, a, a legacy of um, ingenuity, of tenacity against the odds. And that's also a part of who I am. Um, so I'm not trying to steal or appropriate anybody else's culture. Um, I'm claiming what I think is my, what I know to be my birthright that what my, was, you know, forcibly taken from my ancestors, but I'm learning and I want to be respectful about learning, um, not taking, you know, so some, so um, my daughters, I gave, my husband and I gave my, our daughters um, African names, right? So, um, how do we get these African names when he's a Southerner from the United States, I'm a Southerner for generations, and we don't know anybody who, you know, we're not like, say, some um, people in the fifth diaspora who have relatives in Nigeria, who have relatives in England, who have relatives in Canada, who have relatives in New York, Miami, and L.A., right? We, all of our folks are in these Southern states for the most part, and um, so then how do we get these names from books online? You know, this has to be explained. So then when I say I'm an African person, but then I tell people, well, my younger daughter is Sikutani, and they're like, what is that? Well, first of all, how are you saying it? My oldest daughter is Ayodele. Like, that's not how you pronounce that A and B. That's a man's name. Why did you give your child a man's name? Well, in the book, it says... <laughs> You could give it to a girl or a boy, but thank you for telling me that. And I know to explain why she has a man's name, right? Not just Ayo, but Ayo Daily, right? Um, so all of that has to be explained. All of that is part of who I am. Um, and so I think it's important for me to say I'm African-American descended from people who were chattel slaves. 